buying an e-bike is a big investment and with technology developing at an eye-watering pace, making an informed purchasing decision is even more of a challenge. Which is why we've assembled four of the freshest e-bikes for this month's test. Merida's 160mm Travel E160 900E gets a full aluminium frame, Shimano Steps motor and 500 watt hour battery pack. One of the main advantages of the compact Shimano motor is that Merida can reduce the chainstay length and keep a similar suspension layout to its non-motorised cousin. In fact, the geometry on the E160 is pretty close to the best 160mm enduro bikes. The exception is the head angle, which at a hair under 67 degrees is simply too steep by modern standards. The size range is also limited, so if you're 6 foot or over, you'll need to look at either the Trek or the Rocky Mountain instead. It doesn't come with Fox's e-bike optimised fork, but we're not complaining as the regular 36 RC2 benefits from the best damping money can buy. Combined with the Fox Factory Float X2 rear shock, this superb damping control really lets you charge hard. It also has the best tyres on test. The 2.8 inch Maxxis Minion DHR2 is super predictable in a wide variety of conditions and the rectangular centre knobs provide unparalleled braking traction which is pretty handy when it comes to stopping a 22 kilo bike. There are some great features with the Shimano Step system. The display is crystal clear and because it's neatly tucked behind the handlebar it's really well protected. And by using a left hand shifter to toggle between the three power settings the remote is more robust than other designs. Having a full size 34 tooth chainring is also a big advantage for UK riding as it will clear mud much better than the tiny driver cog used by Bosch. On the other hand, the battery life indicator isn't linear so you can quickly run out of juice if you're not used to it. In our timed climb and acceleration tests, it was also the slowest bike of the four. Not that this wiped the smile off our faces, but it did mean that the Merida got dropped on every climb. So the E160 boasts a fun, playful ride quality that few e-bikes can match and the price is simply unbeatable. It's also the lightest bike in this test and that's without using a single strand of carbon. But with a 2 degree slacker head angle and a little more power from the Shimano motor, the E160 would be even faster up the climbs and even more fun on the descents. Lapierre has never been afraid to approach mountain bike design with a fresh perspective and the Overvolt AM900 Plus is no exception. With the battery accounting for more than 10% of the total weight, its location has a huge impact on the handling. That's why Lapierre has put the Bosch power pack directly on top of the motor, making the front end easier to lift and the bike feel more agile. There's 140mm of smooth controlled travel from the OST Plus suspension, but the swoopy carbon frame is so solid it would be even better as a 160mm bike. Lapierre's dual wheel system means you can run normal rubber instead of the standard 2.8 inch plus tyres. Asymmetric inserts in the dropouts make it possible to shorten the rear end by 10mm when you run a smaller tyre. Given that the Lapierre has a sky high BB height, Fitting smaller volume tyres would be a great way to lower the bike. Although the higher BB did allow us to keep the pedals turning and the motor engaged on jagged climbs. And the ultra long chainstays make it one of the best climbing bikes on test, only getting beaten by the extra power of the Rocky. The real issue is with the sizing. There are only three options and all of them are too short. The battery rattles in the frame and the small driver cog is prone to clogging with mud. 12 months ago, this bike was truly cutting edge. But the latest e-bikes ride more like regular bikes than ever before, and this means that the cramped Overvolt already feels dated. Trex Powerfly 9 LT gets the new Bosch EMTB mode. This automatically toggles between all four power levels to provide the right amount of assistance, and it really helps shift our focus back to gear selection. You can manually override the EMTB setting by simply selecting a different mode on the compact display. There have been structural changes to the Powerfly too. The battery now sits in rather than on the downtube, which keeps the weight lower in the frame for improved handling. 
Trek also rotates the Bosch CX motor to get the main pivot where it wants it and shorten the chain stays a fraction. The back end is still pretty long, so the balance and weight distribution feels best on the larger frame sizes. Travel is fixed at 150mm front and rear and the ABP suspension feels bomber solid. We've been impressed with Trek's reactive shock technology on non-e-bikes and it was every bit as good at ironing out chatter on the Powerfly. In fact, the only noises were the battery rattling and the whir of the motor. With only eight gears, bigger jumps between each cog and a shifter that only allows a single shift at a time, it's easy to see why SRAM's EX1 is the go-to e-bike transmission. It's so good, in fact, we think brands should start pairing it up with the Shimano Steps motor for the best of both worlds. At 24 kilos, the Trek Powerfly 9LT is the heaviest bike in this test. Thankfully, it's also the most solid. The steep seat angle and long chainstays offer a great position for climbing, as both make it easier to keep the front end down. So even though it's a bit of a porker, you can still rock it up ridiculous gradients, while the superb suspension response means it can be hammered straight over anything on the descent. It's a relatively agile bike too, but nothing like as playful as the Merida or the Rocky. So while it's raised its game for 2018, it doesn't reach the lofty heights of Rocky Mountain's new altitude power play. Rather than building an off-the-shelf motor, Rocky has developed its own system for the new altitude. The big carrot being that it can achieve the same geometry and suspension layout as the regular model. And there are other bonuses to going it alone too, such as the inline torque sensor that delivers instant power to the pedals, something that no other system currently does. And it's got power in spades. It won our acceleration tests and smoked the competition on every timed hill climb. And thanks to the higher capacity battery, there's an impressive range too. With seamless integration and a slender carbon front end, the power play is hard to distinguish from a regular trail bike. Rocky Mountain's Ride 9 Link lets you adjust the frame geometry and the suspension rate without nibbling away at the 150mm of travel. Up front the Fox 36 fork has an e-bike optimised chassis for extra strength and stiffness. The size large felt spot on for anyone around 5 foot 10 and there's also an XL option for taller riders. So from the get go the Rocky Mountain impressed us with its turn of speed and intuitive handling. Yes, the instant power delivery takes a little bit of getting used to, but having that power on tap has some major advantages. Not only does it make it easier to get going if you stall on a steep climb, but it also makes it easier to gauge just how hard to pedal and how much traction is available. With the most powerful motor on test, the Rocky was the only bike to make it up certain sections of trail, even if the short chain stays mean you have to sit right on the nose of the saddle and get comfortable with wheeling up the climbs. Coming back down, the Rocky Mountain handles the most like a regular bike. With the geometry mirroring that of a conventional long travel trail bike, you don't need to adapt your riding style to get the most from it. But there's a catch. Our pre-production test bike were cut out for no apparent reason. Hopefully it's just a bug in the software, but this was enough of a warning sign to prevent a perfect 10 rating. With this bespoke motor, Rocky has been able to design an e-bike that reflects the ride quality of a highly evolved 150mm trail bike. It's the best bike in this test by some margin, but the issue with the motor raised question marks over its reliability that will only be answered as time goes on.